So I build signs with other signs, just like everybody here, except I, just, I take those signs and put them in the propositional context, which is art. And what I wanted to share here today is a very short presentation, but I think it's going to be an example of what everybody talked about during the, the panel discussion. And I think it's probably going to be what Frederick called visual tact. It's uh, an accidental encounter with a sign, actually. And before I delve into that, I'd like to ask if anybody here in the audience knows what the Banker's Tree is. Mm, it doesn't matter if you don't, I have to look it up myself. A Banker's Tree looks like this. It looks like this. It's a regular tree with the top rounded half flattened down and straightened out. And the bankers tried to introduce this kind of tree back in the old days. And they were using this old, outdated technology of handwriting numbers on a piece of paper and they called it a check. And back then they discovered that number three had its inherent security flaw. And the flaw being that you could easily change it into an eight, which is a costly flaw. But I don't want to talk about another flaw. I want to talk about what the bankers tried to do. They tried to add value to the sign. And it happened last New Year's Eve when my wife took me to New York to meet up with a couple of friends there. And we were staying on the New York subway platform, winding our own village, and suddenly I looked up and I saw this. When I saw that visual, the thing that immediately hit me, I, I just imagined this big graffiti being spray painted over it, saying, CSP was here. Charles Saunders first was here. <laughs> That's what I saw. Because it was such a strong visual, and it, I kept it. When I came back to Belgium, the first thing I did was I made it in this clean graphic. Because it was the most incredible symbiosis between the number one and the number three. And I call it unitary. And there's already a lot of words out there talking about a unity comprised out of three parts. There's trichotomies, we've got triads, we've got trinities, we've got triune. And for me, the reason there's already so many words out there is because the number three is a really important number for us human beings. Uh, we, live in, we live in a three-dimensional space. If we see white color, it comes from three hues. An uh, atom is comprised out of three constituents. If we form a government, we do it in three powers. When we look at language, we try to decode it in three parts. Uh, even in ancient spirituality, the, the Tao created one, one created two, three, and two created three, and three created all things. It's just a human, it's just a human number. Uh, this is just being a graphic of our brain to the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. But the most important part there is the unity, is the third part, the thing that connects them and makes it one complete something. So for that, it's maybe an example of uh, intuition and knowledge. Um, also, in our field, uh, these are just old triads. I found on the internet a graphic from Sir Weir, the author of Cybersemiotics, and it just drew out all kinds of triads from uh, semiotic theory, and somebody posted it online showing it the triad world vision, or as I call it, the monotriadic world vision. And the, and the main reason why I asked Gabriella whether I could share this with you is because I think we should be conscious that every visual, every signing that's out there has the potential of offering insight. But it doesn't always get there. This is a visual being used in Asia right now, talking about the third gender, male, female, transgender. It's a derivative of the yin yang symbol, and they added the yuan. They call it the yin yang yuan symbol. You are standing for the void. But if you look at the text of the Tao, it's already in this original symbol, the void. It's always implicitly there. We've got, we've got two parts, white and black. But when we put it together in a circle, from a third unit, and connecting everything, we, ah, sorry, 
the void already in this is there. This is already a unity symbol. And the thing that hit me most on that subject last one is the fact that every visual, every sign you put out there has the potential of becoming a key to unlock doors and to concepts <laughs> that are difficult to understand. For example, Charles on Spurs' concept or triadic sign here. If I go just one, two, three, unitary, it's all about the un union between the three parts. So, I don't know if Malcolm's going to see any actionability in this <laughs> sign or not. <laughs> but if I've been able to convince anybody in the audience that this unitary symbol has a simulation's tree written all over it, just give me a hand. And I will give you a free button, because unitary is key. Thank you all for listening. That's wonderful, uh, Thierry. Thank you. That, I don't see actionability in it. That is actionability. That's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You know, the Holy Ghost that makes it all happen, keeps it happening. It's the uh, dialectic of Marx and Hegel. It's, you know, it's the force of history. Um, thesis, synthesis, uh, thesis, antithesis, synthesis. It's also the triangle of the human genitalia, you know, which is what makes it all happen. So action, action, triune. What was your word for one and three? Unitary. Unitary, rock on. Yeah.